Hello all, this is a follow-up video to one that I posted earlier this year on an overtake distance measuring device that I was working on. It is done now and I've taken it for its first test ride. A lot of my YouTube friends will know that this is a topic that generates a lot of discussion amongst us uh, as it's very difficult to determine overtaking distance from our helmet camera videos alone. So I wanted to build a device that would let me properly measure this. Here's the handlebar display unit that shows sensor values amongst other things. I can push the button on the front to scroll the various display modes I built it to be completely sealed and waterproof, so I can use it even in heavy rain. Here's the black box that holds the sensor itself, the data, the data logger, and other things. Also, there's a giant battery on top, but by no means does this need such a large battery. I just used that big one there for this prototype because these are very convenient and easy to work with for outdoor projects, so there might be a bit of water. And here's what's inside the black box. There's an Arduino microcontroller that samples the sensors and transmits the values to the micro SD card reader and the handlebar display. Uh, also, um, there's some extra space in there, so I put in the 9 axis inertial measurement unit, or IMU as they're called, uh, which contains a 3 axis accelerometer, 3 axis magnetometer, and a 3 axis gyroscope. There are all sorts of applications that I could come up with uh, for using that uh, yet to come. And also there's an infrared distance sensor in there which works based on a different principle than the ultrasonic sensor. Um, so I'll be playing with that too a little bit later. And here's the final assembly. I've got the handlebar display turned on there. It's connected up to the data logger. I'm just pointing at the wall just a little over a meter behind me. I went through a very careful calibration procedure there to match up um, sensor output values with measure values on my tape measure there just to make sure it would accurately measure distances over its full range, and it worked really well. It was very very good with its measurements. Here's the black sensor box mounted on my rear rack there. Looks kind of ugly, but uh, seems to do the trick. And here's the handlebar display. Uh, also ugly, but uh, I might be able to do something a little bit better later. And of course I want to be able to match up helmet camera video sensor data, so to do that all I have to do is um, record a timestamp on the handlebar display for a few frames, then afterwards I can very easily match up time indexes in the video with time indexes in the sensor log. Also I want to point out that distances measured are relative to the farthest left part of my handlebars there, so just like shown in that picture. So here's a plot of 30 minutes worth of raw data. It actually makes a lot of sense, and I'll go through some sample overtakes here. On the vertical axis is distance measured in centimeters, as reported by um, the ultrasonic sensor. And on the horizontal axis, oops, I mislabeled it milliseconds, but this is actually minutes and seconds in the helmet camera video, uh, which each of those samples above were taken. Um, so uh, at the left here is a big cluster of points. That's just when I was moving the bike through the house and the yard and into some narrow residential streets. So measuring lots of objects, uh, like parked cars and things on the side of the street there that I can pick up. Sometimes even big trees and bushes. The middle is going by a construction wall for a bit, so you can see a steady stream of um, echoes that the sensor received there. And at the far right, that's more riding through some narrow residential streets. So again, lots and lots of objects there to pick up. And all these other points in the middle here, all around here are all just uh, overtakes on a more open road. So let's look at an example here. I've zoomed in here to 25 seconds worth of measurements starting around the 10 minutes 55 second mark in the video. <clears throat> There's a curious pattern here. You can see uh, looks like two overtakes where they're gradually getting a little bit closer. So let's just go to the video here and we'll just move the playback bar to the 10 minute 55 second mark. Now about there. I'm going to hit play and we'll see these two overtakes. Oh, there's the first one, and the second one. Let's uh, look back at the sensor data again and see what we measured. So we can see the first one was about five and a half meters, the second one about two and a half meters. And you can see it's sloping downwards because, well, it makes sense because we were pulling in the merge there and the cycling. Let's do another example. This time we'll look at the video first and then find the matching sensor data. So um, let's just play the video. There's one overtake, and there's a second overtake. Let's go back to the sensor data. Right at here, about about, about five minutes, forty second mark or so. So we just have to zoom, scroll over, too far. Okay, getting close. Ah, here we are. These are the two right. 
5 minutes 40 seconds or so, 45 seconds I think it was in the video. So it's the first one at about two and a half meters, the second one there at three and a half meters. So um, let's look at the video again and we can see what two and a half and three and a half meters looks like. So we're going to play back part back and freeze for a second there. So that's what um, two and a half meters looks like. And let's just look at the second one. And that's three and a half meters from the gray Mustang there. So the sensor data seems to match up well with the video. Now, how about for a bit of a closer overtake? So we have one here that I'm measuring. I'm looking at just over a meter. That's 107 centimeters I see in the, in the sensor data there. Um, so we'll just move the playback bar to the corresponding place in the video right here. And we'll just press play and let's see what that is. Oh, it's just someone turning right at the lights here. So that's, that's what one meter looks like on my camera in that part of it. And there it goes. All right, I think that's uh, sufficient for a demonstration of this. Um, so uh, well, what's next for me? Well, obviously I'll go and be using it, riding around different streets parts and parts of the city with it. Um, also, I might uh, try and write a program that will automatically overlay sensor measurement values with a video that makes it very easy to review afterwards and uh, for making videos for YouTube. Um, it'll look something similar to what you might have seen in other users' videos who overlay, overlay GPS maps, uh, speedometer output, and compass headings. Uh, and also, I want to take a look at the other data um, from the other sensors that are in there, like the inertial measurement unit and the infrared distance sensor, um, all sorts of things I can think of to um, use uh, that for. I could measure compass heading and uh, hill slope, uh, other things too that I could think of. Also, I'd like to make the sensor box smaller and more convenient. It should be able to quickly disconnect and reconnect from the rack there um, and maybe run it on coin cell batteries instead of that um, giant monstrosity. I can certainly get the power usage of it way down and uh, yeah, that would really help make this thing more easy to use. Um, and finally, I think I'd like to add wireless data downloading so that I don't have to mess with micro SD cards all the time. Uh, I only have one SD card slot on my computer, so when I'm you know, messing around with putting in my video camera card for both the front and rear cameras and uh, if I have still camera photos I want to download, I don't want to have an additional card that I have to download all the data from at the end of the day. So Bluetooth downloading would be really nice for that. So thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or other ideas you may have for this, uh, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you.